All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I wanted to first thank uh, uh, Guju Guju and Gavin, and I would also like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today and uh, pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Uh, so yeah, my name is uh, Alejandro Soviaga, Fabia Montaña, Suari Jartolo, Italia de Jaribe de la Vega. But as some of you already know, um, they refer to me as USO, that's U-S-O, so we'll keep it simple. Um, I'm here on behalf of Pacific Marine Group, and we're one of the operators uh, of the COTS program. So uh, I'll try to be quick with my presentation. I work with 16 wonderful people on that vessel there called Odyssey, uh, again for Pacific Marine Group. That's the area of operation that, that we cover. Um, just note that there's, although it's a lot of area that we cover, there's two reefs in particular that we've been focusing on for the last two years, and that is John Brewer and Keeper Reef. For those of you from Townsville, you're probably familiar with them. Uh, but that's sort of, yeah, that's the, sort of the scope of the area that, that we're targeted to manage. All right, so I'll just quickly briefly touch on, and uh, David Williamson and, and Westcott have done a great job already touching on some of the pr operational procedures that we carry out on COTS program. Uh, the first one is surveillance, or, or Mantito, as a lot of us like to refer to it. Um, it's, again, as it's already been mentioned, it's a really good way of, of prioritizing where to go and where we're going to have the most impact. It's not necessarily going to tell us, again, where the vast majority of the COTS are, but it is going to point us in the right direction. And for that purpose, it does it fantastic. The other operational procedure which we're commonly engaged with are RISs, the Reef Health Impact Surveys. These are things that, uh, sorry, these are surveys that we carry out routinely, and they just look at the health of a specific part of the reef uh, time over time. And it allows us to, it's a quick way for us to see whether the area that we've been culling is still in, in good or, or not so good condition. Um, and again, they're very specific on where, where we carry them out. Uh, as you can see in this video, it's a really well uh, put video together of, uh, of one of our sites over on John Brewer. And there's uh, Maxi, our technical officer, carrying out said risk. Sorry, or risk. All right, and then the thing that we're all here uh, as an operator uh, to talk about, which is the culling aspect. Um, I'll get straight into it. So often when we come across a coral out on the reef, uh, we find the one that's there on the left. Uh, we'll find a scar, a white scar from where the uh, coral has uh, caught has been predating. And as you can see over time, um, algae and the cod continues to munch away at, at the coral. Eventually it comes to that point where the coral is now overtaken by uh, macroalgae and it, it completely dies. So we try to get to it obviously before, before it gets to that stage. Um, and here's just a quick video of what day in the life underwater looks like. I'm sure most of you have already experienced it, but for those of you who haven't, that's one of our, our divers. Um, you see, if you can see the white scarring on the branching coral there, uh, it's just a signal that there's possibly a coral at the base of it, and we go in and inject them with vinegar. And that's basically our, our life throughout the whole year. There you go. And it's a one-shot kill, which is fantastic. Uh, the other thing that we do is uh, we aid with other people's uh, third-party research. Um, so other than culling, rising, and manta towing, we do like to get our, our hands uh, dirty and get involved with as much other extra, extra research as we can. Uh, specifically, there's a little funny anecdote with small cots. Uh, again, having been out on the reef for so long and some of our divers are so well experienced with them, uh, we got, an, we got an, uh, a call from Ames one day saying they needed um, small cots. And we asked them, well, how many do you want? And they said, oh, just as many as you can get your hands on. And we're like, well, I mean, really, how many do you want? And they said, no, 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 just as many as you can. And we came back one trip with 250 of the tiny cots. Uh, so I think we, we gave them one too many than they wanted. But after that, they give us routinely, no, we want exactly 30 cots. <laughs> and, and that's how we do it. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things that we've achieved over the last couple of years. Uh, so we visited 10, uh, 10 reefs, two of which we are still currently and actively engaged with, uh, John Brewer and Keeper. And I was trying to think long and hard about how I'm going to explain the story of John Brewer. David Williamson already explained that it's a, it's a complicated relationship we have with it. Um, so I did what any good scientist would do, and I pulled an all-nighter to 
to try to put together something that was digestible. And so what I've come up with, and then hopefully this tells the story of what's been going on. All right, so when we got to John Brewer, John Brewer gets given to us by Gabrumpa like this, all right? They say, this is your reef now to manage. They've got all the zones already pre-made, um, pre all on the circumference of John Brewer, and say, off you go, start calling them. So um, up there in the, in the, uh, the little black box, it's, it's, I've put into every category of the CPUE what each zone, so each one of those little squares will be. Um, so anyway, first time we got to John Brewer, as we started culling, um, so you can see, obviously we got to that reef, there's a big outbreak, and it's all red zones. Yeah, there's a big outbreak. We're culling thousands and thousands of cuts at this point. Um, we're getting through them. And as time goes by, we start realizing, oh, there's a few cuts just outside um, the, the circumference inside the lagoon. So we open a couple of zones in there with Gabrumpa's permission. We go in and again, they're starting to be high CPUE, lots and lots of cuts. And then the weather side, so that southern side, little time over time, little by little, we start managing it, managing it, and it starts getting closed. But that northern section, right? So, so that, that bright red, that remains red. And at this point, so we're 18 trips into John Brewer. We've done heaps and heaps of dives. Um, we're very pedantic about how we call each every single zone. And continuously, those zones remain bright red, right? So there's still lots and lots of cuts. And we can't get our heads around it. We're, we're, we're pretty frustrated at this point that fine, the weather side, the southern side is now all, all closed, but the northern side still is putting up a fight. So we're 28 trips now into there, and we're still calling hundreds and hundreds of cuts. Um, so we start thinking to ourselves, well, obviously these zones, as, doesn't matter how many times we call them, doesn't matter how many passes we go through them, we're still, um, we're still ha finding lots of, so it's like we're thinking either we're really bad at, at finding these cuts or, or they're obviously getting replenished. And so we start, you know, theorizing maybe the cuts are coming from the deep. Um, but Gabrumpa themselves went out there and put an ROV in the water and found that, in fact, the cuts weren't coming from the deep, but more from the inner lagoon. So as time went by and we continued calling, we started opening more zones in the, in the inner lagoon. And there we go. And then Daniel Schultz came out on a trip with us and <laughs> open up the hole in the lagoon. He said, okay, we're, there's only one way we're gonna, we're gonna get through this, and it's by going and just calling the entirety of John Brewer. Uh, so this is again, 48 trips into it. Uh, at the moment, we, we came back from a trip yesterday, and that was trip 55, so it's still pretty recent days. But as you can tell from the inner lagoon stones, quite a few of them are bright red. Um, and what's been really interesting to us, that's sort of been happening very recently, so it's going to trip 54, you can see that the crest of so the circumference of the John Brewer is now starting to drop, right? So this is as of recent as this last trip. Um, so what we're sort of um, what, theorizing is that the work that we've actually managed to do in the inner lagoon is now so that it's not replenishing those outer uh, zones that we're putting up a fight. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, that's sort of the the story of John Brewer, and hopefully that paints a clearer picture, and we'll continue to to uh, to manage it. So that's uh, John Brewer, and I had a couple graphs, but David Williamson and Westcott already talked about them and, and dropping our CPUs quickly. So I'm going to skip past them because I know we're pressed for time. Um, yeah. Again, just John Brewer putting up a fight, not wanting to drop below that CPUE. That's all that, that one's trying to say. Keeper, I don't have the same slideshow for Keeper, but that's just sort of to show you what Keeper looks like, again, as of last trip. Um, so in the same sort of regard as with John Brewer, but Keeper's not put up the same fight. It's a much smaller reef. It was much more manageable, and those outer circumference zones aren't getting replenished like John Brewer was. Uh, again, we touched on these. Right, so uh, just to summarize, uh, again, what we've done across these two reefs. Um, in total, if you add up all the cuts that we've called across these two reefs across the both years, uh, it's nearing on 80,000 cuts now. Um, it's a long, lot of cuts, to be honest, but, but we're getting there. Um, one of the things that 
again, so we were kind of frustrated with ourselves that we weren't able to, to close those zones. So one of the things that we went out um, and did is we started being really specific about making sure that when we're calling a zone, we're doing it so comprehensively that we're not leaving a single coral unturned. Uh, and so we take aerial images with our drones, and the, the dive team is, is, is absolutely amazing. So big, big shout out to the Pacific Marine Group divers. Um, you know, as they go out and, and, and do their morning dives or afternoon dives, uh, some of the dive leaders who've been there, again, 55 trips in, um, they've done the dive in their heads before they've even hit the water. I'm sure there's a few of you here who, who've been diving a certain part of a, of a reef long enough that you've memorized that it. it's almost your backyard. Uh, so that's just sort of what, what John Brewer and Keeper have become to us. Um, we get this question a lot, are we making a difference? Uh, I always like to answer with yes. I, I do truly believe that the impact we've had is, is measurable. Um, one of the ways that we're doing a difference or like to think that we're, we're making a difference is we do like to bring in new technologies and we do like to, I guess, look forward to, to new ways of culling or new ways of, of improving ourselves. Um, and this is one of our newest members. Uh, we've nicknamed her Allison. Um, and she's hopefully going to do a lot of good surveys for us. Um, and again, one of the benefits that we have of being out there is that we do get to collect data, again, outside of, of, of maybe COTS, but those risks don't just tell the story of what's going on with COTS, they tell the story of what's going on with coral bleaching, as, been, as has already been mentioned, and um, we're very privileged to be able to contribute to that. And yeah, so I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Um, John Brewer, we're still finding a little bit of resistance, but I think we're finally on the, on the right path. Keeper, we're, we're pretty much almost, almost done, and we'll be sad to say goodbye to it. And uh, we'll continue surveilling other reefs. That's it. Thank you very much.